All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to Rogue Leader Gaming, and welcome back to another Derail Valley tutorial. Uh, before this video starts, I would like to briefly mention something. So I'm I'm super excited. Thank you so much for the support on the previous tutorial. Uh, I got a couple of comments saying um, that I ought to work a little bit on on some of some of the things, and I've taken those into account. Hopefully, this one's a little bit more a little bit better put together. Um, I appreciate those comments, and, and I like I like stuff like that. I always, I always like to better myself and, and better my videos for you guys. And hopefully, uh, this video will reflect um, some of those thoughts. So, with that, let's get started. Checking out the 060, the S060, in today's video. So, this locomotive is the 060. Um, it is the newest engine added to the game very, very recently. This locomotive, it is, it is based on the Yugoslavian Railways Class 62, which is a shunter, I believe it was, it was war surplus, it was, it was used during the wars. Um, I will be honest though, I haven't read quite enough, and I'm not entirely sure which war, but you know, the war, uh, one of them. <laughs> it's interesting, some of the, some of the, uh, engines from across the pond that I'm struggling to find information on. Uh, so if you have any more information, be sure to post it in the comments below. Uh, on the history of this thing, because it's always cool seeing some of that stuff. But yeah, it's war surplus, uh, used for a lot of shunting duties and a lot of um, maybe some light work, kind of like what we're going to be doing today, going from the um, forest, where are we? The forest south to the sawmill, uh, doing a bit of a job just to kind of show you guys um, how to operate the train and everything. Um, I really like the way that they've modeled this engine. I like the the red highlights and the green uh, on the cab and the and the tanks. It's really cool looking. I, lo I love the little way this little thing looks. It, it fits very well, very well into the game uh, with all the rest of the uh, engines and everything. Oh, there's the sun. There's the sunrise. Uh, we got early morning, early morning start for today, and uh, sun's just about rising over the horizon. So, casting those real pretty shadows and everything so but yeah i love the way this thing looks it's super duper duper cool um and oh my gosh my favorite part of this thing they animated the valve gear so like the bar actually moves but we'll get to that we'll get to that shortly whenever we explain that um let's go ahead and get in to the actual thing uh so you can jump up there there's there's an actual like step modeled in here so you can jump up uh, into the cab um, and here we are in the cab. Uh, we do have this roof hatch, uh, which is a thing. You can't climb the ladder properly, but you can, like, teleport up here. You can check your coal load and, you know, get hit in the face by a tunnel, etc. Uh, we're gonna... Actually, we're gonna leave that open let in just a little bit more light for now. Um, but the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is, before I actually explain how this thing works, I wanna explain... Let's, let's explain briefly, for those of maybe who don't know, how, like, steam engines in general works. This is just gonna be a very, very basic understanding of it. Uh, I know kinda how it works, but, um, if you want a better explanation, there's videos out there. I just wanna get the very, very basics of it down, uh, for you guys today. Um, just so we can kinda get a basic understanding. So, back here, you've got your firebox. Obviously, with this engine, it's a little bit harder to see, um, because of the tanks in the way. But this here is your boiler. And it holds water, um, which is heated up by the firebox, which is in this back part, um, kind of the lower back part. This is actually it right there, down here. Uh, the fire heats up the water, turning it into steam, uh, which will run through... Um, these two look like sand domes, so presum presumably this big dome here, um, into the steam chest down here. Uh, which will actually, it's kind of up here on this one, um, but it'll come come down into the uh, into the valve here and then into the cylinder. So the valve, um, based on where this bar is located, which is what your reverser Johnson bar, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, moves this uh, this lever here, is going to determine how much steam goes into your cylinder. That steam will enter on one side, pushing the piston the opposite direction which will turn the wheels, uh, and then it'll come in the other way, turning them more. Um, and again, depending on where this lever is placed, that determines how the steam enters, and however the steam enters determines how much power you're putting down and how much, 
in, in what direction you're putting power down. So it's all based on that valve. And then of course, once it does that, the steam will come out and exhaust out the stack. Again, very basic overview of how steam works. I'm probably getting a couple of things wrong, but I'm getting the gist of it. Um, I'm not here to get it exactly correct. There's videos on the internet uh, if you want to learn more. I just want a very basic, basic overview of it for the layman who has no idea how steam locomotives operate, you know, just so they can kind of get through the game. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to go ahead for the time being and oops, I have done the a thing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just for the sake of it, I'm going to plop down our lantern so we can kind of see the firebox better. Um, so this is the firebox. Am I leaning again? Stop that. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes it toggle leans and sometimes it, it doesn't and it kind of gets annoying. All right. <laughs> so here's the inside of the firebox. Obviously, coal goes in there. Um, so let's do that. You will need to buy a shovel and a lighter from the shops. The shops are located anywhere on your map that there's a blue dot. That is an indication of one of the places that there are is a shop located. And so you can buy, I think from most of the shops, you can buy the shovel and the lighter. Um, but we're going to come back here. Uh, this is where the coal is. We're going to grab a shovel, throw it in the firebox. And usually uh, it'll fill with the with the regular shovel. There's a couple different kinds of shovels, but uh, with the regular shovel, you can usually take three shovels to in order to fill the box. Um, and once you have it full, oops, uh, you can simply take your lighter uh, and you can open it up, light it, and light the fire. And as you can see, it's going down pretty fast right now because we have our dampener completely um, open, which is this right here. Uh, this is the dampener, um, or maybe just damper. I'm not sure exactly how you say it. Um, but this thing right here uh, controls your fire uh, temperature, uh, largely when stationary, so we already have to throw some more coal in. Uh, because this thing is running pretty hot. If you have the dampener up, uh, like it is right now, as a starting position, your fire is going to burn hotter. Whenever you push it down, it's going to burn a bit cooler, uh, which is kind of going to save you some coal, uh, especially whenever you're running, because the fire is going to heat up automatically as well uh, as you're moving due to draft. What this does is whenever it is up, it's opening um, a intake valve, basically, uh, so it'll intake air from outside the firebox whenever you push it down, which it has a couple positions and you can push it down slowly as you start to move um, and everything. Uh, it closes that valve and just works off of the draft. The other way that you can heat up the fire faster. Uh, so this is our fire temp gauge right here. Uh, so as you can see, we're getting there, um, but it's actually starting to go back down. So let's let's turn our uh, let's turn our damper back uh, to open so we can heat that firebox a bit quicker. The other way that you can heat your firebox is um, through the blower. But we can't actually use that just yet. We actually first need to go turn on uh, some of our appliances. So let's go ahead and do that, and then I'll finish covering the fire, uh, the firing aspects of this engine. So, firstly, we have back here, uh, which I guess I've left my lantern in there, so we'll use this as our light. We have the lubricator located right here on the uh, right side of the locomotive. Um, just above the first driver. Um, if you don't turn this thing on, then you can get, um, it can grind things and, uh, damage things, so you want to have this turned on. But it can also, I believe, if you leave it on, I believe it can actually cause a very small amount of environmental damage, uh, as it might drip oil onto the tracks. Um, but most of the time it really doesn't matter, so you can just turn it on, leave it on, and it's important to have it on. Uh, most of the time. The next two things that you're going to want to worry about, and I guess if you want to be immersive, you can step up on this step here and step up onto the cylinder here, and then you can actually climb up uh, onto the water tank, uh, is this, which is the, um, this is the dynamo. Uh, this uses steam to, um, it's a steam dynamo. It, 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 it uses steam, um, rapidly pushed over a turbine. Um, that turbine will spin, which will generate electricity for things like your lights uh, and a couple of other appliances. 
So let's go ahead and get that turned on. It also generates an annoying noise, just like the real thing. Which is quite accurate and really, really cool that they actually simulated that. It's also a little annoying, but it's also annoying on the real one, and it's not near as annoying as the real one, as the real one is usually a lot louder. Um, the next thing we've got here, this is our, um, our air pump. Uh, and so we've got to turn that on. And as we turn that on, you'll hear that start to cycle. Uh, and that's compressing air, it's our air compressor. Um, uh, it's compressing air, charging the main reservoir. Uh, this is, is, um, used for, I believe you need it in order to run the blower, uh, as well as a couple of other, um, elements like that. Um, but you also need it especially for your brakes. If you don't have this thing turned on, uh, your brakes, they don't work. So you need this on for your brakes. Very, very important. So now that's, those are the three appliances that we need to turn on. Um, before we can really do anything else. So let's go ahead and hop back into the locomotive. Um, and it, it looks like we'll need another shovel of coal. And, um, as you can see, we're pretty much getting there. Our fire temp is coming down a little bit. So let's go ahead and demonstrate the blower. So the blower is this valve right here. And if you turn it on, um, then as you can see, that fire temp really starts to increase. Um... Usually you want to use the blower, uh, mostly whenever you're stationary, specifically. Um, but for right now, we'll go ahead and turn it off because we're pretty much at pressure here. So this is your pressure gauge. Your pressure is going to come up uh, as you as your fire increases in temperature. Sorry, I just bumped my mouse. Um, and it will come up to a maximum of 15 bar, at which point um, the safety valves will go off and um, keep it at that 15 or less. Uh, otherwise, if it gets too hot or uh, too much pressure, it will, of course, explode. I, I don't know if there's a way. It may be really, really hard, but there may be a way to overpressure it. But because of those safety valves, uh, honestly, I'm not entirely sure if, if it's possible. But if it is possible, it's incredibly hard. And um, if you do everything right, you shouldn't need to worry about that. The thing that you should be worried about is water. So this over here is your water gauge. Uh, so you got to make sure that you have enough water. And actually, as you can see, we're starting to run. Um, it's starting to go down. So whenever you start, the locomotive is going to have almost no water. So don't go turning on your dampener just yet. As your fire heats up, the water is going to start to boil. It's going to get excited. All those molecules are going to get moving around uh, and it's going to expand. And so the water level is going to rise uh, on its own without actually having any actual injector turned on but at this point as you can see we're starting to get down closer to halfway this is your injector uh this is how you put water into the boiler by the way this water glass is taking a reading from the back of the boiler so the only way to get a clear reading is on flat level track like we are now if if you're going downhill uh all the water is going to slosh to the front of the boiler and you're going to get an inaccurate reading it's going to read a little bit lower than it actually is um but not too much and if you're going uphill same thing all the water is going to slosh to the back where this valve is located um and so it'll read a little bit higher than it actually is so again you want to be a little bit careful and aware of that but for the most part um if you're on flat level track um it, it reads just as it is and honestly if there's no water in there no matter what if you're going uphill downhill no matter what if there's no water in there turn your injector on if there's uh, too much water in there you can turn it off um uh, pretty much either way just keep monitoring it constantly uh, and that's the way that I usually do it, just constantly monitoring it. But at this point, we need some water. So this is your injector. Turning it to the left, we'll turn it on. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on all the way to get uh, a bunch of water filling up in that boiler there. Um, and so this measures the water in the boiler, not necessarily the water in the tanks. If you want to see the water in the tanks, you've actually got to open your... Um, tank there and you see this here is a gauge and you can see that water is starting to go down because our injector is on but it's a reasonably large tank um this engine however is designed for short range mostly um though honestly it can get pretty far although i will say going all the way from about the food factory in town to the harbor in town you're going to use pretty much all of your all of your water doing that um and so you got to be careful but uh, you can do it. I've done it before. 
Uh, our coal looks like we're out, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to go ahead and put this down so that it's going to run colder now that we are, in fact, at pressure. But actually, we're not quite at pressure anymore. Whenever you dump water into the boiler, you got to keep in mind, dumping water into the boiler like that is going to lower your pressure, your steam pressure. So you got to be careful with dumping water uh, if you need pressure. So try not to put water in on a on a hill whenever you're going uphill. But at the same time, if you run out of water, that's a bad day. So you got to make sure you have at least some water in there, even if you're going uphill and it's going to kind of kill your pressure. But you'll see now we're no longer at that 15 bar and it dumped all of our pressure out because of that. So keep that in mind as well. But so, okay, we've, oops, we filled it with too much water. What do we do? Well, that's where the blowdown comes in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and turn our blowdown on, which is going to open on the other side. We're just going to open a valve that just jets um, the steam water combo, um, and that is how we get uh, less water in the boiler. There it goes. You'll see it start to come down. Uh, and so if you overfill, you don't want to overfill. So if you overfill, oh, that's the wrong. <laughs> Oops. Uh, if you if you, do, you don't want to overfill, so go ahead and turn the uh, blower back off uh, now that it's at the right spot, but you don't want to overfill. You kind of want to keep it around about um, in this sight glass uh, for sure. Um, so that's how to dump that. But also you may find that you get somewhere and oops, we're out of water. Like I mentioned, running from the food factory all the way to the harbor. It's a long distance. You honestly might run out of water. Keeping in mind, there's places to fill up at like the steel mill, for example, you could fill up with water. There are places to fill up all over the place, uh, water towers and everything, so it's not hard to get filled back up with water, um, necessarily. But, uh, if you were to, say, run a job, you forgot to fill up, now you're out of water, you made it there, but, oh no, you're out of water. If you let that thing sit too much longer, it's gonna explode. What do you do? Well, that's where this lever comes in. This is your coal dump, and so if you go ahead and pull on that, you'll see the coal go down and the fire will go out. Um, and so that's how to turn the engine. That's also how you turn the engine off whenever you're just done with it. You don't want to waste fuel. Um, you can go ahead and turn it off like that. Um, but let's go ahead and get another full load of coal back in it. Uh, where's my lighter? There it is. Also, you typically want to keep these doors closed. So that's basically how to fire the locomotive. Um, and firing this thing, it's all about managing your coal, making sure there's enough, uh, enough fire going on in there, um, to keep pressure up, but also you want to make sure that, um, turn that back on, get a little bit more pressure. You want to make sure you, you, you never run out of water. That's extremely important that you never run out of water. So it's a, just a balance of running the engine and then just managing your fire and water, uh, levels. And that's it. It's a bit complicated at first, but once you get used to it, you're just constantly checking it, managing it, keeping an eye on it, and it, it should be fine. So the next thing I want to go ahead and cover is the running mechanics after we've explained the firing mechanics. So first things first, you know, you getting running is important and everything, but being able to stop is equally as important as getting running. Otherwise, you're going to run off the tracks. So our one up here is the independent brake. Turn that on and it's going to have the brake. Uh, apply the brake and take it back down and it's going to leave it back down. If you just apply it a little bit, it's just going to apply the brake a little bit. This brake, however, only controls the brake on the locomotive itself. Um, so keep that in mind when using it. It is only applying the, the brake to the engine, uh, not whatever train is in the back. So that's what this brake is for. So you have a couple positions. This is your train brake. You've got a couple positions on this brake. You've got fully released, which is what it's at normally, whenever it spawns, then you have running. So you'll notice I moved it to that and your, um, your brake pressure did not come up. So that is an important thing to note. Um, it is in running. So this is a position where it's not going to change your brake pressure at all. It's not released, but it's not applied either. It's going to hold here wherever it's at. So if we go ahead and give it a little application, get it up to about one bar and then move it back into that position, you'll notice it stays there. And then we release it and it'll release the pressure 
And we want to leave it in running, otherwise the brake pressure can kind of bleed and it'll, it can do weird things. So you want to leave it in running most of the time. And then you uh, want to dump the air. Oh no, you know, something just happened that's bad. We need to go ahead and stop, full stop. Just fully apply it like that. Just hold it until it uh, fully applies and then you can just release it. And there you go. And then f bring it all the way back to release. But typically, you want to leave that in running. So the other thing we've got to do before we can move is the handbrake. So that's back here on the back wall of the cab. Um, and obviously, all the way to the right is on. All the way to the left is off. So now we're ready to get moving. Um, there's a couple points of note about moving that we're going to get into in a moment uh, regarding the cylinders. But before we do, let's go ahead and cover the basics of how to move. So, this is your Johnson bar. Um, this locomotive specifically has a Johnson bar. You could call it a reverser if you're across the pond, I guess. But this is your Johnson bar. Um, and it starts in this. This is neutral. Uh, so, it's not going to... If you apply the throttle, which is this bar, it's not going to do anything. I lied. It's going to do a little bit. It's going to move forward just a little bit, apparently. But it's basically not going to apply power. So you want it centered um, whenever you're stopped. But whenever you're going, um, because that's basically neutral, whenever you're going, you want to push it forward for forward, obviously, and then backward for backward. The cool part about this, if we push it forward and come out here, this that lever that I was talking about that uh, controls the valve for the steam going into the cylinder, um, into the piston, um, you can see right now it's all the way up on the um, banana piece. There's a technical term for this, and I, um, like I said, I mostly know how this works, but we're just going to call it the banana piece for right now for the for the layman's terms. Uh, so it's you'll notice that it's up here, and then if we come back, bring it back into reverse, it actually does. It goes all the way down to the bottom, uh, and so it's actually animated. So many games don't take that into account, and it's so cool to see that in this game. Um, but, so we're going to push this forward. Usually for starting, especially with heavy trains, you're going to want it pushed all the way. But the way this works is, the farther forward this thing is pushed, the more power you're going to be get, giving it. And actually, the same is true in reverse. The farther back you're going to be, um, you push this bar, the more power you're going to be giving it in the opposite direction. Uh, and so you want to start usually with it like this, and then as you get moving, you want to bring it back. Uh, because this is using as much steam as possible, pushed all the way forward, uh, as much steam as possible, which gives you as much power as possible. But you want to use less steam, so you can save steam while you're running. And so you can bring it back as close to centered as possible, uh, while you're running to conserve as much steam as possible. But to get started, we're going to be pushing it all the way to the front. Then we're going to be using this, which is our... Uh, our throttle, um, some people call it the regulator, and all the way down is fully closed, and as you push it up towards the ceiling, um, you are going to slowly let steam, this is the thing that actually controls the, the steam entering, uh, into the, um, the steam chest, which is this gauge right here, um, and then into the cylinders, thus powering the train. And so that's what this controls. So we're going to go ahead and start this. Now, there's a very important note about this here, which is the cylinder cocks, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, but you're going to, as I apply the cylinder, uh, the, um, as this says regulator, it's a, it's the throttle. Um, as I apply, apply the throttle, you're going to hear some weird sloshing noises. Be very aware of those noises. Um, and as we begin to hear them, um, I will explain what they are. So let's, but let's go ahead and get started, get moving. Our brakes are all off. We're going to go ahead and apply the throttle. And as you can see, we begin to move. And we're hearing those water noises. I'm going to go ahead and shut off. Uh, what those wa water noises are, oops, is they are water condensation that builds up in your cylinders. If you keep that on, it will damage the locomotive, so you don't want to do that. You want to turn this on, which is your cylinder cocks. 
which turns on a valve that helps to release some of that water in out of the cylinders. It releases a little bit of steam, but it also pushes out that water, um, which is very important for keeping those cylinders. You don't want water in there because water is not compressible. Uh, and so you can blow a cylinder if you're not careful um, and you don't release that. So whenever you start moving, so that's going to build up when you're not moving. I wanted to show you the sound of it. Anytime you hear that sound, you know that we need to... Oh, you gotta turn the cylinder cocks on. Um, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and run a quick job, um, from the forest to the, uh, sawmill. Very, very quick and easy job, um, but that way I can show you guys kind of how to manage things on the road, so you can kind of see it a little bit of on-the-job training. I like to do that in these videos, so... With that, we're gonna go ahead and back up to our train and get rolling. So, just as a quick recap for the controls, put our Johnson bar in reverse because we're going backwards. Release our independent brake and apply some throttle. Uh, we've been sitting still and so we've still got the cylinder cocks on which is releasing steam from those. And actually, if you watch those, you'll see that the valves are actually accurate in the way that they're actually applying. Um, is actually accurate to how the steam engines actually work, applying, you know, as the piston goes one direction, one valve will open, as it goes the other way, the other valve will open. Um, it's really, really cool that they got to simulate that. Oh! I almost forgot, guys, the last thing that I want to talk about really quick. So we turned on that steam dynamo right there, right? So the last thing I, om I almost forgot this, um, one of the most fun parts about this, um, so, obviously, first of all, uh, a couple of other details, the windows, of course, open up. I completely almost forgot about this, um, but you've got, obviously, your windows can open up. You've got this roof hatch, which I'm going to go ahead and close, actually. Um, but you've got your cab light, which is right here. Uh, the switch for it is right here. Uh, you need the steam dynamo to be turned on in order to use this stuff. Like I said, it generates electricity, which is what this uses. Uh, you got the janky light bulb just hanging directly from the cab. Um, which is great. I love that aesthetic. Uh, but yeah, this is the switch for the cab light. Uh, your headlights are right here. Um, it, turning this dial to the right turns it, uh, so obviously centered is neutral, or is, is all lights are off. Um, turning this dial to the right will turn the headlights on. Uh, the first position is in running, um, which is just lights. They don't actually provide any light, but they're just kind of on. The second position is your low beams. It's daytime, so it's kind of hard to see, but it, you can just about make out that there's actual light beams coming from that. And then the uh, final position, the third position, is your high beams, um, which is where the third light on the top comes on, um, providing light. And then same thing in the reverse, if you turn it all the way. Uh, versus turning that on, you still get the beams, whatever. So it's just the same thing in the reverse, but I, I like to have them on um, even during the day, just because uh, it looks cool to have all the lights on. And then um, you have, whenever it starts to rain, you have windshield wipers. You have three positions for this. You have your first, you have off, then you have, I guess you have four positions. You have off, then you have this one, where you're they're going to cycle every once in a while making a lot of racket if it's not actually raining. Then you're going to turn on this, this is the second one, and they're going to go like that. And then, of course, you have on full bore where they're just going to sling any water that gets on the window as hard as it possibly can. But that's an annoying noise and it's not raining currently, so let's go ahead and turn that off. And the last two things, of course, are your noisemakers. I can't believe I almost forgot these. So first off, You've got the bell, which sounds like a bell. And then of course, how could I forget the single chime whistle? Uh, which of course is the chord. How can I forget that? Yes, the whistle, which it's a single chime. I'm not a huge fan of single chimes, but it definitely does work. Uh, for the aesthetic of this engine. I can't believe I almost forgot that, guys, but it's okay. So, let's go ahead and grab this job, and, uh, let's get moving. Alrighty. 
All right, so all of our brakes should be released at this point. We've got our job. Uh, looks like we're going to need some more water. Let's go ahead and get our injector on. I'm, I don't like to put it on full bore usually, but um, let's go ahead and get us a bit more water going on there. Uh, it looks like our fire has also gone out in the time that it took me to uh, screw around getting things going. All right, we're going to go ahead and move this into forward. Keep those cylinder cocks on. All of our brakes are in release. We're going to move that back to running and go ahead and apply us some power and get on out of here. All right, now let's see if we have, uh, if, our, if we still need the cylinder cocks at this point. Put them on for just a little bit longer. So as, um, as you go, you'll figure out whenever you can turn the cylinder cocks off. Usually doesn't take too long, um, but you can turn the cylinder cocks off usually whenever um, you don't hear that noise anymore or whenever you turn them off, you won't hear that sloshing. So that's usually whenever you can turn them off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw an extra shovel in there and turn that off. Push that down because we are now moving. We're actually going to be going downhill, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off the throttle as well. Alright, so we're headed downhill at this point. Uh, going downhill, you're really trying to just make sure that you don't run out of water uh, as much as possible. And then you're just trying to manage your speed. You don't want to get going too fast, so we'll go ahead and take a set of, uh, of brakes right here, actually. We are getting going a little fast for this section. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the speed limit is. I think we're doing okay. What's our fire doing? Oh, our fire is great. Now we're going down to 50. It might go down to 40, so I'm just going to set up just a hair more air. Just try to maintain that speed. That's what it's all about going downhill. Uh, you really don't need to worry too much about everything else. You just want to make sure that you are maintaining. That's a three. Maintaining that speed. Still a three. This is a nice, easy job right here. Um, you just got to kind of... It's it's all downhill until you get to the sawmill, basically. And so, realistically, uh, um, you can kind of just keep things going and... Uh, as you're paying attention to your speed and everything it isn't too bad of a run uh, you just kind of run down slowly keeping an eye on things and then once you get up to the steel or not steel the sawmill uh, you get to um, that point and you can send it up the hill let's go ahead and release our brakes because we now have a 70 which we can do I don't want to get up going up all the way to 70 Let's get a little bit going farther. But like I said, it's all just about managing your fire level, which seems to be fine still, and your water level, which also seems to be fine still. Um, so it's just a balance. That's all it is. So just constantly keep checking this stuff, and then, uh, and then you should be okay. The other thing that's really important is to know where those grades are. So, like I said, coming up at, right at the sawmill, we are going to have a bit of an uphill. So I want to build a little bit of pressure before we get there at some point. Okay, we're going, getting going a little fast. I'm just going to put a little bit of a brake on, kind of regulate that speed. But like I was saying, so you just want to, so like right before we get to the um, sawmill, I want to kind of... Uh, heat up that fire a little bit. Get it going a little hotter. Um, so we can maybe build back some of this pressure that we've lost. Um, as we've been running, uh, we want to be going a bit slower. I kind of want to take this turn at around 40. I'm not sure what the actual speed limit is, but I'm trying to take this around like 40. 
Um, but because I know we've got we've got that um, incline coming up, I want to kind of build a bit of pressure if I can. Maybe try to run our fire a little hotter, in fact. See if that might work for us. Yeah, 40 was correct. Um, but as we build up that fire, we'll be able to uh, have more pressure for the hill. Because you want... Whenever you're going uphill, you want to be able to use as much pressure as you have available, because going uphill, you're going to use some pressure, and we're spicy. Are we on the hill? We might, be, we might have just made it to the hill. So I'm going to go ahead and give it all the power we need. Oh yeah, I, just, I see the water glass, so yeah, we're definitely on the hill. So we're going to give it all the power, um, so the bar's all the way in the corner, we're going to put the, um, we're going to put the regulator up, and now you'll hear it start to really work. Actually, this is a pretty light train, so you're not going to hear it work too much, but it should be, should be working a little bit. But also, look at that. Uh, our pressure is going to be kind of going. Also, you'll notice as we're getting going uh, at this point, look at our temperature. Our temperature's coming up because now we're working harder. And it, it, because of the draft, that is actually going to make the fire burn a little bit hotter. Which is actually quite useful because you want the fire to be burning a little bit hotter. We don't need this much power, so I'm actually going to back off pretty good on our uh, Johnson bar. Um, because we really don't need this much power for this short of a train. I did this a, a while back with, um, the first video of this that I tried to record. Uh, and I needed that bar all the way in the corner and we almost stalled. Alright, we need a little bit more water, so let's go ahead and, and increase our water level. Turn the injector on. All right, we can largely just coast in at this point. We're off the hill, so we can just coast into our spot and go turn this job in. All right, we're just gonna shut off and apply our train brake, let us Come on to a stop. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off as well. Oh, hey, look, there's another one. All right, and because we're gonna be moving this again, I'm not gonna shut it off or anything like that. We're just gonna, uh, I've got one last thing I wanna do with this. Actually, two last things. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this job turned in. All right, not too shabby. Got a decent amount on that. I really don't care, though. Uh, this is a sandbox. I'm just kind of doing this as a bit of a tutorial to show you guys. But the next thing I want to go ahead and show you guys, uh, now that we've done that, is I want to go ahead and show you guys how to do manual servicing with this, because it's actually a little bit tricky. Um, so the first thing to keep in mind, you're going to see these water towers um, in pretty much every um, like location on the map. So if we bring up our map here, you're going to see the water towers in almost every location, I think. Um, the water towers are going to be super common, but you'll see that um, you have these um, these black dots everywhere once in a while in a couple of places. Those are your coal facilities. And so you, you can only fill up with, you can fill up with water almost anywhere, right? But you can only fill up coal wherever there's one of these coal facilities. Um, and so that's kind of, it kind of makes a, li a little bit more challenging, right? But also, uh, you can always, if you just need more coal and you want to keep using a steam engine, but you're not somewhere where there, um, is a coaling facility, you can always just pay your fees. But, uh, manually servicing is a little bit cheaper. Um, the thing about this one is because the tanks are on the side, the water is a little bit trickier, so... Let's go ahead and bring the locomotive over here, and I'll show you guys how to fill it up with water and and with coal. 
Huh? That is the wrong engine. <laughs> that one's not fired up yet. Okay, this is our engine. All right, let's go. All right, so we're approaching the water tower. We're gonna do water first uh, because water's a little bit trickier. So let's go ahead and come to a stop here at the water tower. So as I said, water's a little bit trickier on this thing because you can't just be sitting in the zone. You have to be sitting in the zone, but the spout has to be over your water hatch. So let's actually take a look how much, so you, this needs to be open. So we used a good amount of water on that run. Uh, how much coal did we use? Yeah, so we used a good bit of coal as well, about maybe a little bit under half. Um, but uh, yeah, so we need to fill this up with water but our spout needs to be in line with this with this hole. On the 282, um, because the tank is on the tender and center line on the tender as well, it's a bit easier, uh, but on this one, it can be a little bit tricky. So what you wanna do, the, the way I found to do it, you can get this open, you'll stand here on the decking here of one of your tanks and you'll look up. And so you want, in line with this, you wanna put that spout. So you come back over here, and this is where your control for maneuvering the spout is. So we're just gonna move it a little bit. We're gonna come back up here. Uh, looks like we need to move it a little bit more. And that should actually be pretty perfect. Uh, so from there, you now need this to be right over your water hatch. So let's go ahead and hop back in and we're going to very slowly move forward and we're actually going to be listening for it to beep and we'll also be able to see here as we get in range so now you'll see it says misaligned so you got to make sure that the water spout is aligned which means we need to get a little bit farther and you'll hear that boop so as soon as you hear that, it's time to apply the brakes. Oops. Um, and now the spout is in an optimal position to be able to go into the water hatch. And so we can come over here. And this is the cool part. Uh, I'm actually gonna use the alt key in order to do this. We're going to go ahead and fill it up and you can actually see the water come out, which is really, really cool. And then once you have filled up, you can, of course, insert your wallet and pay. Um, and that's kind of how to do that. It's a little bit hard. It's not that bad, but you just got to be patient with it um, In order to fill it up and again, if you just struggle with it too much, you can always just pay your fees uh, But next we're gonna go ahead. Let's move back and we're gonna grab coal So the nice part about coal it's gonna come out of that yellow chute right there. We have a roof hatch Our tank for coal our, our uh, bunker is right back here is where the bunker for coal is and so Honestly, the easiest thing is to just line up the hatch, uh, you, um, line up the, the chute with your hatch. You can just look up directly and see it. So let's go ahead and move back and grab us some coal. And you'll see, you'll hear that same, um, that same beep noise whenever we are aligned. So let's go ahead and get slowed down. That was it right there. And oops, we passed it. Okay, hopefully that's still aligned properly. Is it? No vehicle. What? Okay, so I guess we... There we go. Now we should be properly aligned. So yeah, it just takes a little bit of practice to figure out exactly where to put it, but you'll see it's aligned right there. And of course, uh, if we kind of get into a position where we can see it, we'll go ahead and add coal, and you can see the coal actually goes into the coal hole, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, insert wallet, pay, etc. Great. Now we have, uh, as we can see, if we pop up here, a full coal bunker. The last thing, just quick, quick last little kind of closing notes before we do our last, uh, last little thing I want to show you guys. Um, this engine is really, really cool. It's got a reasonable amount of power. Um, 
and everything and and for the price of, for the license of this thing it's it's well worth picking up early game the last thing i forgot is like the stats i will have already put it up at the beginning of the video in text form but going over it vocally you of course have it the license costs um 20 000, uh in order to get the license for it um you of course have uh it weighs 45 tons, which means it has loading rate, a load rating of around about 450 tons, give or take. Um, and uh, it has length of 9.1 meters. So be sure to keep those things in mind as you're using this thing, but uh, it can do quite a bit. And um, I'll be honest, 450 tons, I've kind of done, I've used this thing a little bit at this point, and I've, I think I've hauled a little bit more than that. As long as you're not going uphill for very long and you get a running start, it can do a little bit more than that, but not by much. You can do around about 500 if you get a running start. Um, but starting from at tonnage, yeah, about 450 is around about correct. So just keep the, those things in mind and everything. And then, uh, yeah. So the last thing I want to mention is... Um, Let's go ahead and get our fire lit re relit because oops, I forgot. Um, I'm going to go ahead. We've got this all the way open, so our fire is going to be nice and hot. Um, and I'm going to do one last thing, which is show you guys what happens when you run out of water. So as mentioned earlier, I'm going to take the blower or the, uh, the blow down, which will release all the water. And I'm going to show you guys what happens when you screw up and you run out of water. Yeah, that's why you don't want to run out of water. Because if you run out of water, um, it could explode. Um, that's literally all I did is just dumped the water, let it run out, and then um, it'll explode if you run out of water and it becomes uh, spaghetti. So you don't want to do that. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed. That is going to go ahead and be it, this one, uh, it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, you don't want to run out of water. There's other ways that you can make this happen. If you derail and hit the ground too hard, it'll also explode this as well. Uh, there's a, a couple of other ways, but um, that's the number one that you want to watch out for is your water level. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed and hope you guys found this helpful. Next time we are going to be working with the, um, the DH4. We're going to be checking that one out uh, as our next locomotive next week. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one. Later, everybody.